Hello guys and welcome to Custom Gamer. I'm resurrecting Level Design Diary. I know, it's amazing. Because I've finally got some mapping to show. <laughs> so, if you're new to the channel, you probably haven't seen this series before. It's been on hiatus for a long time. It's basically just where I talk about what level design work I'm on at the moment. Now, I must apologise in advance because the video capture went a little bit wrong on this video, so you can only see part of the screen. It's not too terrible. You can still see exactly what I'm talking about, but uh, I apologise for that and it will not happen in future. Unfortunately, this is the problem with recording things live. Things go wrong. Anyway, without further ado, we'll get into the video. I hope you enjoy it and I'll see you next time. Okay, so here we are in the editor. Uh, you can probably see a couple of changes already. I, I kind of made a really long list of things that which either people didn't like or that I didn't like or just didn't have time to fix in the map, uh, along with uh, a lot of feedback I received on the map from places like Planet Philip and uh, various forums around the internet. Uh, thank you every, uh, thank you very much everyone who sent me feedback, either in written form or as a video or demo. It was All of it was really, really helpful in identifying a lot of problems with the map as it currently stands. So what I'm currently doing now is working on a separate version of the map for a mod so it'll be packaged separately it'll have its own intro screen and all, all that good stuff uh, and it'll be it'll have a lot of revisions in it from the feedback I've received so first of all as you can probably notice this capacitor is directly in the players view when they exit out of the uh, intro room the intro itself probably I'll do another level design diary video just on the intro because it basically needs completely scrapping and reworking because that's one of the things I really hated about the map was that the intro was just a giant info dump with the player locked in this tiny little room at the start. I think a lot of, I think it tested the patience of a lot of players because it was too long. Hilariously enough, the original intro was about twice as long as that. It had a lot of exposition for the character you're dealing with, this Ren character, uh, a little bit of backstory for him. There was actually two characters uh, kind of sharing the mic talking to you. But yeah, it was about twice as long, and, and even that, was, I was just like, oh my god, this is way too long. So um, I trimmed it down a lot to what was in the map currently, and it's still too long, really, I think. So what I'm playing with at the moment is that, as you notice, there's some new doors and things here. So I don't, I th don't think the player's actually going to spawn here still. I think they're actually going to spawn out here. I haven't built it yet, but out here there's like... A little bit of room kind of under the map so I might have the player start off in like a, a, a subway or some kind of underground thing maybe a sewer or something I don't really know about a sewer that's kind of a bit cliche I guess but I don't know we'll see so the player will exit out of the whatever the underground section happens to be into the intro room where there'll be probably a little bit of talking but like literally like 20 seconds at the most, kind of like a, who who the hell are you, what are you doing here, blah blah blah. Like, as in Ren's never met you before, he didn't rescue you or anything like that. So yeah, and then instead of having the player exit through this door here, which I need to rework this door, it hasn't been done yet, but they're going to come through this door and exit into this house area here. There's a couple of reasons for this. Uh, one is that as they come out here, I kind of get a little tease of a, a big environment here as you're walking along. Then as you come out here, you've got the zombie banging on the wall here, which is kind of a, ha, huh, okay, the zombies. And then when they turn, they'll look up here and they'll see the first capacitor instantly. You'll notice I've also moved the grenade trap a bit further down here as well. This is because when it was over here, players were kind of looking up at the vista here, kind of walking up uh, this uh, incline, and they would... Kind of like, hardly any players would actually spot the first grenade trap, which is uh, a real failure on my part, because the first grenade tra trap is meant to be the kind of safe experimental grenade trap where the player can notice the mechanism, look at it without any interference from enemies or anything dangerous at all. It's just them and the grenade trap. They get to kind of work out how it works in their own time. There's no real pressure. So... I think most players not even noticed the first one was a yeah that was a big fail. So now it's it's right here. There's nothing else to kind of impact the, what the player's doing. There's even a giant spotlight I've added here shining on it. 
I haven't actually compiled this version yet, so this might be a bit much, but uh, you know, we can test that and see how it goes. So yeah, the player can uh, mess around with this first grenade trap. And then when they come up here, their attention will be fully on this area here. You'll notice that the bridge has been uh, removed, or destroyed, should I say. Uh, I really like this for a couple of reasons. First of all, the reason I did this was so that players can see the uh, capacitor. Obviously, there'd be a giant bridge in the way if I hadn't removed it. So it just helps the sight lines to what I'm trying to communicate with this uh, alley at the start here. Uh, secondly, I really like it because, as Ren mentions in his uh, audio to the player, is that he's kind of barricading off Ravenholm and trying to cut off all the exits to the town. So destroying bridges leading away is, is kind of... I think it feeds nicely into the, the little fiction I've got going on. So these visuals aren't quite complete. As you can see, there's a little bit of detail for like the broken bridge here, but a lot of it's still very flat and uh, not looking too great. There's a bit of debris down here. This still needs a little bit of work. It doesn't quite light correctly yet. But the player is yeah, presented with this, and then you'll notice we've got the Skyrail station right here at the beginning of the map as well. Uh, again, the visuals here aren't quite done yet. There's a, a lot of kind of temporary fencing and stuff that I might try and redo with something else to make it look a bit better. We'll see. But the reason for this is that I want to communicate the relationship between the capacitors and the uh, Skyrail station through something more than just the voice acting. I want the level itself to demonstrate that turning on these capacitors powers the Skyrail. And so I've rejigged this uh, first capacitor a bit to kind of show that. So the player walks up here, hits the button, and the Skyrail station is directly in their view when they do this. And uh, there's some scripting here that makes these lights, which are currently off at the start of the map. There's uh, all these lights around the side here that you're seeing. Uh, they kind of flicker for a couple of moments and then turn on directly when the player presses this button here. So as soon as the player hits this button, there's direct feedback that what they've done has impacted the Skyrail station. The lights have turned on. The uh, progress, progress lamps here, one of them turns on. And then you're going to get the voice acting in addition to that, saying, you know, well done, you've turned on the power, you need to find two more, etc., etc., that's how all that is going to work. Uh, again here I might rejig the entire Skyrail station to make it better fit into this environment. This is literally like a copy and paste and rotate at the moment. Uh, but yeah, it needs a little bit more work. Let's get in there. Like, this positioning might not be fine as well. It kind of looks a bit strange, kind of sitting out in the middle of nowhere, this, uh, this little steps up to this thing. But uh, I kind of like the fact that it looks very, very jerry-rigged. got all this... Kind of contraptions here that's all kind of set up in very very hasty fashion so that's the first capacitor the other thing i've been trying to focus on a lot is getting the map to run a bit faster and optimization in general uh, i spent a lot of time this in the release that's already out there but i think i can do better so i've been working with a lot of hint brushes and area portals and all this kind of stuff to try and gate off areas of the map so it's not rendering as much all at once you may have noticed when playing the map you get a lot of um, red text in the console saying I forget the phrase now but it's like too many vertexes in frame or something like that basically what that means is that there's too many world polygons in view and the engine will start culling them uh, which can end up in uh, visual flickering on the screen like generally it's kind of distant objects will kind of flicker in and out of existence it's very very ugly it's at an absolute minimum in the map, but it does still happen in certain areas at certain angles. So I want to try and eliminate that because it's really, really nasty. It doesn't actually affect gameplay or anything like that, but it's, yeah, it's not great. So I've been working with a lot of area portals, and uh, I want to give a shout out to Top Hat Waffle. He's uh, another YouTuber who does very, very in-depth tutorials on the Source engine. Uh, it gets very, very technical, and he released... It was a couple of days after I released this map, actually, he put out a video on optimization in Source, and it's absolutely fantastic. Uh, I learned a lot from it. So check the description below the video on YouTube. Uh, I'll put a link to it in there. I recommend if you've ever wanted to make a Source Engine map for any Source Engine game, you want to watch that video. It's fantastic. He goes through absolutely every optimization technique there is with fantastic walkthroughs and a uh, explains it very very well better than I ever have so yeah definitely recommend that 
A couple of other changes here. Obviously, with the Skyrail station being moved to here, I can remove all the uh, all the uh, supports that went to this area. That helps with the optimization a little. Just generally removing lots and lots of faces helps because it's it's not a uh, static prop kind of uh, density problem. It's a world poly problem. So things like removing detail brushes, removing world brushes where I can, really, really helps with this issue I've got. So this should help a lot. And we've got a bit of a bare space here, which uh, I've been brainstorming on kind of what I want to do here. Currently, I've just got the swing from where the Skyrill station is right now. I've just moved it here, but that's kind of just a joke thing. I haven't really uh, decided what I want here yet. But what I'm toying with is having like a... Uh, a kind of way station here that Ren has set up for you and what it's going to ask you to find various tools and power tools hidden around the map and uh, when you bring them to this station here you're going to put them in and it's going to like suck them up and then he's going to deposit kind of health ammo batteries through like a little chute and give them to you so the more stuff you find the more supplies he's going to give you it's going to be a cool way to Kind of reward the player for exploring and finding things in the environment instead of just having one big payoff at the end like i have with the cursed shotguns currently which brings me to the cursed shotguns <laughs> they are dying a death i've decided to remove them i haven't quite removed them from the map yet but obviously there was one here that's gone uh, i haven't removed all of them yet there's a couple more over here there you go incidentally if you're wondering how these worked there were just three Three particle systems with the lava extract glow effect on them. Uh, everything was parented to a fizz box, which started off asleep and motion disabled. And then when this gets its motion enabled, it um it triggers all the stuff here, and then once this board is killed, all its parented objects are killed as well, so it, it removes itself nice and uh, cleanly. And the player picks it up. That's how that works. And then, because you can't be sure kind of what order players are going to pick up shotguns in, and I had a counter on the screen for how many they collected, I had to create a, ni a nice case here for uh, how many shotguns they have. So, named all the cases one to eight because there's eight shotguns. And then on each case, You've got a separate text, which are down here, saying display the first text and play the pickup sound for the first text. And then that's just the same for all of them. And then on case eight, we trigger something different because they found all the shotguns. And then literally each one of these is exactly the same thing, but just one of eight, two of eight, three of eight. And the counter controls which one is shown. So the counter starts at zero with a maximum value of eight. If you look at the inputs here, whenever someone picks up a shotgun, add one to the counter. And then on the outputs here, whenever a value gets put into the counter, the value that it's set to is sent to the shotgun case. So that when the player picks up two shotguns, the value two is sent to the shotgun case. Value two is here, and then it goes to case two and plays the correct correct sound and shows the correct bit of text. So that's how all that works. It took me a while to get right because I'm terrible at scripting. <laughs> so yeah, the idea I have is it's a more law friendly version to put in the same kind of gameplay as with the shotguns. So it's forcing players to explore around, I shouldn't say forcing, it's encouraging players to explore around the map and find stuff which is what the shotguns do currently, although they kind of stand out a little bit, I guess. So, but it's a more in-fiction way of doing it. So it's more grounded in the world. You're finding kind of discarded tools and, you know, useful items in the map and giving them to Ren, and he's rewarding you for that. Which brings me to the reward. So I guess I'm going to spoil my own map here. So if you haven't found all the shotguns, kind of, I don't know, stop watching, mute it for a couple of minutes, whatever. If you even care, who knows? But when you find all eight shotguns, you activate the ghostly Father Gregory in the church. Uh, here he is. Yeah, that's what finding all the shotguns does. And uh, 
this was a piece of gameplay I really, really liked. But the problem with it is that it was, in my opinion, it was one of the most fun elements of the map, and yet it's gated behind a uh, collection mechanic. So what I want to do in the version I'm working on now is have this as just a part of the map. So Grigori's in the church waiting for you. I might have to move him. I haven't really decided the logistics of how I want to do this yet, but essentially once you've activated all three capacitors, Grigori will run to you and he'll say, blah, 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 follow me, and then take you to the Skyrail station. I think it'll, it'll be much more clean than it is now because... The problem with it currently is that you can find all eight shotguns, run in here, you know, he'll trigger his event, carry you all the way through the map here, and take you here, even if you haven't activated all the capacitors. So then he's like, aha, I've taken you to the Skyroll station, for no reason. Uh, it's, it's a little bit of a problem. The thinking behind it currently was that I wanted Grigory to show the player where the Skyroll station is, as kind of another way, like... You know, you want to go to this area, it's important. But, you know, obviously, feedback and, um, I guess, common sense in a way dictates that uh, doesn't quite work. There were a couple of issues with his uh, scripting as well, kind of moving along. He would run to his assault path here, which I've, come, which I've moved now, so not a very good demonstration, but he had an assault point right outside this door. Then he's meant to run through the uh, warehouse and to the... Uh, the old Skyroll station location, but he would sometimes run back this way. And that would really confuse players. I know a lot of players were kind of fighting inside the warehouse, expecting him to run through, and he would just run off this way and lose them, which is really frustrating. So yeah, it's. I think uh, having him perhaps wait here for the player would be safest, and then once you found all three capacitors, you'd run back through here and he would join you and follow his assault paths back to here. And then I can have like a whole bunch of zombies ambush you on the way back. It'd be kind of cool. So a couple of other things that I'm working on. This puzzle here with the uh, the police system opening the door is going to get a full rework. Um, I've done kind of preliminary stuff here. I've widened the uh, the stairs going into this area because that was just really fiddly to get up and down and if zombies were on it they would block you and it would be really annoying and so yeah, there's a little bit more room here for both AI and the player and I'm thinking about moving the entire door kind of from here to about here so that it's presented more directly to the player as they enter the area I've also probably noticed I've, there was a tree here before I've moved that so the player can see into the area better I've got some more ideas for kind of how to open this door rather than a pulley system, but uh, none of that's implemented yet. Let's have a look around here. Oh, I've rejigged this puzzle a little. Probably looks a little different. Oh, excuse me. So the issue with this puzzle is that, aside from the fact that it was, it was a little bit dull, uh, so I'm thinking about spicing up a little bit, having some... Just some tiny little scripted moments as players wandering around the, uh, the various parts of the puzzle here. But uh, I've extended out this area here because I saw a couple of players playing where they would get this barrel, try to turn around to place it here to jump up and like drop it off the side. Then of course you have to jump back down, which resets the puzzle. Yeah, it's really, really annoying for players. So uh, trying to make that much harder to do by making this area much wider I might actually put... Some of this fencing here along this side as well, just to make it really, really hard to drop that barrel off the end. And then once the player gets to the top, this area has been extended out as well, because again, players would fall off here when trying to jump up, which is another really annoying thing. And you've got an, uh, an extendable ladder here that drops down, so that once you do beat the puzzle and get to the top, you, you've got a quick way back up again. That's all looking good. Now, this door was another issue problem where it just it's just not visible enough, right? So this is the door where you have to use the gravity gun to remove the crossbar and then uh, you can open it. So what I'm toying with right now, I haven't actually tested any of this mechanically yet to see if it works, but you notice there's a zombie here who's going to bang against this window. Uh, I'm going to try not to have him bang all the time because there's another zombie banging on the 
on the wall over here. You can probably hear both of them at the same time. So might need to add some more scripting so they're not banging constantly because that could be really annoying. So yeah, so hopefully the idea with this is that it's going to make some noise on this window. So the player might come over here and look to see what's making the noise and then they'll see the cross beam right here. But secondly, the major thing I've done is that I've unlocked these doors from the start. So when the player uses them, they will open, but they'll, they'll obviously be blocked by the, uh, by the cross beam. And the player should be able to see the cross beam blocking them. It'll be just a much more visually descriptive way of what's actually happening here. Whereas right now you, you use the door and it makes like a strange kind of metal impact sound. I think that just confused people more than anything. They're like, why is this door making a weird noise? I don't understand. But yeah, I think uh, the combination of the zombie here and being able to open the door and see that there's something physically blocking it, uh, I think that'll work quite nicely. I haven't actually tested any of this in game yet, so we'll see. What else have I changed? I don't actually think there's much else changed in this version of the map. Again, it's still a very, very heavy work in progress. There's a lot of stuff I still want to do with it, which hasn't been done yet. In fact, I've actually got... I always write myself notes like this to keep myself on track. So uh, you notice here I've got church physics door problems. I kind of went over that. So the player has to look up to see the mechanism to actually understand that it is a pulley mechanism. A lot of players didn't even understand the mechanism of the door. It doesn't look like a door. Again, some more feedback I had was that some people didn't even realise it was a door. So that's kind of an issue. Need to fix that. And the pulley implementation is lacking. So maybe it's just me setting it up wrong. But if you if you uh, grab the counterweight with the gravity gun, it kind of vibrates in the air, and there's no kind of give on it. But yeah, um, need some work. So intro problems, I've already talked about this, so it's a huge info dump, it's too long, it explains too much too early, and the player is locked in a tiny room, bored out of their mind. Uh, this is kind of a thing where, especially in Half-Life 2, generally map mechanics aren't really explained to the player through voiceover like this. It's kind of, again, this is why I'm trying to explain the capacitors actually in the level, not with voice acting, because it just feels better for Half-Life 2. Some more feedback I received about that. So the Skyrail station, again, I've already talked about all this kind of stuff anyway. Link between capacitor stations and, and the Skyrail should be the level, not through the voice acting. And this is stuff I've already done. So capacitor models, Skyrail station moved. I've already talked about the shotguns and all the problems with Father Gregory, so we don't need to talk about that. And a new collection mechanic, which I've already talked about. So I think this will be really, really cool. It'll let me hide more things around the map. And uh, we'll just have to uh, do some explaining as to what props are useful and what ones aren't. Uh, so what I'm thinking about right now is I've actually got one actually already in the map before I even thought about this. But uh, if you look in this box, there is a tool. So what I'm thinking is anything that's useful, I'm going to give it the target name of tool. And then we can just have a filter on the uh, on the uh, receptacle you place them into that filters for the class, not class name, but target name tool. And then it'll, it'll accept the ones with that name. So that's how I'm going to trigger it up, but I haven't actually done the work yet. So yeah, that is that. So this is the current state of Power Struggle 1.1. I think it's going to help a lot with the uh, confusion issues which people were suffering from. Uh, as for a release date, I don't know. Hopefully it won't take me too long to do all this stuff. It just depends how much free time I get to work on this stuff. Uh, but I'd love to hear your feedback. Uh, again, if you, have, if you do have demos of your first playthrough of this map that's released, or if you made a video of it, or even if you just have some thoughts about your first time through, feel free to email me or leave a comment below this video, or send me a link on Twitter or whatever. Um, Sending level designers first playthroughs of their maps is always appreciated. I don't think enough people realise just how helpful it is to actually see that stuff. It lets you identify so many problems. And people think, like, he's not going to watch my demo because, you know, I played terribly in it, I died four times, and uh, I couldn't work out what to do. That's the best kind of demos to send because it shows the author where the uh, kind of visual language in their map has gone wrong. 
and what players aren't understanding. That's the best kind of stuff to send to map authors. So if you know if, if you're just a gamer that just loves Half Life Two and you you do record a first playthrough through a map and you think, oh, this is really bad gameplay. He doesn't want to see this. Yes, they do. That's exactly the kind of stuff they want to see because that really helps them work out what's gone wrong in the map. So yeah, first playthroughs, awesome stuff. If, if you do have the facility to record them and send them or just record a demo and send that, map authors will be so appreciative of that. It's so helpful. So this has been Level Design Diary. I'm kind of resurrecting the series a bit here as a... I am streaming my work on this level, so if you would like to uh, check it out, I stream on twitch.tv forward slash tddaz. Uh, I usually tweet and uh, post on Google Plus and Facebook and all that crap uh, when I do stream. So if you're new to the channel and you kind of want to check out a level design stream, then you may do that. And I will see you guys next time.